We'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth. Downtown Baltimore, the warrior, lawyer, Jay Wendell Gordon. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, Donnie Glover. How are you today? Outstanding on the cover of today's Baltimore Sun. There was an article about a state's attorney, Greg Bernstein. We were hot on this story back when he came out with the, uh, when the judge came out. Uh, with the findings, what he got, two out of 21 charges? It was 21 charges that were identified, and he got two convictions, uh, which gave him a less than 10% conviction rate. Apparently, uh, he, he's touting that as if that was some sort of success run on his behalf, being as though that was his first trial in upwards of 15 years, is my understanding. Uh, he sent an email around that obviously wasn't supposed to get out to the public, but he's got some defectors in his own camp who are certainly putting out these types of emails uh, that are supposed to be inter-office and they're actually getting out to the public. But one of the things that he said in the emails is that he had conceded or acknowledged that uh, the charges that he brought against those police officers who were accused of uh, kidnapping some young men, 15 years old, and sending one from, I believe it was from West Baltimore to East Baltimore or vice versa, and the other one they, they sent him all the way out or they rode him all the way out to Howard County and left him out there with, with no shoes, nor socks. Nor cell phone. Nor cell phone. Uh, and in fact, the individual had to call the police in Howard County by way of 911. Be that as it may, Jack Greg Bernstein was unsuccessful in convicting these officers of the more serious offenses, such as uh, false imprisonment and kidnapping. Uh, he settled for a misconduct in the office, which was basically a misdemeanor, and these officers received probation. Uh, I believe that two of them, are going, the two that were convicted, are going to actually appeal their cases. And Bernstein even conceded that they have very uh, meritorious appellate issues. Uh, so it's, there is a good chance that those convictions will be overturned on appeal, which would give Bernstein at that point in time a, a, zero, zero, a zero conviction rate. And the funny thing about Bernstein is that when, when you read his email, you kind of get to know who the real Greg Bernstein is. He's a very narcissistic individual. And I say that because he had mentioned in his email that he gave credit to his associate or assistant state's attorneys for making him look good, and he indicated that that's what it's all about anyway. No, it's not all about making you look good. It's all about prosecuting crime in Baltimore City. You've seen the Mr. Mark on that. And that's what we've, we've been very concerned about from the very beginning because your whole campaign had been about nothing but you and your own narcissistic attitude toward perhaps your next level in the political regime in the uh, state of Maryland. But right now in Baltimore City, we have problems. We have crime, we have unemployment, we have vacant housing, we have education problems. So it's not about you, Mr. Greg Bernstein. It's about the citizens of Baltimore City. And your trial, uh, your trial victory is not a victory at all. In fact, it's a failure. It's, it is a dismal failure. And, and I'll tell you, uh, as a citizen uh, who works in Baltimore City, I would feel very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable going to court when I know my attorney beside me has a less than 10% conviction, conviction rate and perhaps a 0% conviction rate. What are you working on these days, uh, Council? I'm working on a number of things, but it, it makes me feel unsafe in this city. Okay. And now he's, not only is he not bringing home the convictions, but he's also agitating the relationship that he once had with the Baltimore City Police I, I was going to say, doesn't this yeah. suggest a little tension in there? Uh, well, it's tension or, created. Or the police expecting and, and the then, state? And then, you know, he was very disrespectful to the police officer who was on the case anyway. Whether right or wrong, he called the only, his own detective a crack detective. Like, who refers to their detectives who are supposed to bring them cases and to uh, bring them evidence of crime? Who refers to their co-workers or their, their cohorts as crack detectives? And doesn't it undermine the officer's credibility, the detective's credibility? It undermines their credibility. It undermines their work ethic. And it strains the already, as the, as. Greg Bernstein conceded bad relationship between the state's attorneys well, and, well, and his one, office. One, so now mm -hmm. he's ostracized himself from the police, or at least it, it shows that he's attempting to do so. He's ostracized himself from the citizens of Baltimore City because when you have cases like 
uh, the Waterson case, the Eli Waterson case, where the young man was uh, uh, 15 years old, was beat down uh, by three uh, Jewish men, and I shouldn't call him a young man, he's a young boy, beat down by three Jewish men. He's dropping the more serious charges, and uh, he's not prosecuting it as a hate crime. And then here, you charge these officers with all these heinous charges that you suggested at least, or that was suggested in the article at least, that you conceded that they had been overcharged and that you had problems with the case. And you know what? That case is not an anomaly. It is not a unique situation because I'm currently dealing with a situation now. And in my particular situation, I have a young man who's facing the charge of attempted murder where the actual victim of the attempted murder has indicated that he did, is not responsible for the shooting. That is, the victim was shot multiple times by an individual who he expressly told police that my client was not involved in or was not a part of. How old is this case now? The case or the young man? The case. The case, he was arrested in December, and here it is now, June. So he's been incarcerated for the last six months, just being warehoused in jail waiting on his day in court. And you know what makes that case so particularly bad? And I've been speaking to the Office of the State's Attorney uh, ever since I've gotten involved, and more intensely over the last couple of weeks, is that the police had indicated that there was a witness, that is an eyewitness, who had claimed to have seen my client involved in this shooting. They said that. They wrote that in their police report. Well, that particular eyewitness found me came to my office and gave me a video recorded statement indicating that she never said that. And we went to court and that she had told the state's attorney's office that she had never said that. And we went to court on this information. Are they fabricating cases? Are they fabricating cases? They're doing more than that. They're fabricating witnesses, at least in this particular case. And I have the evidence to show it. Has Greg Bernstein offered to release this young man from jail? No. Has he offered to review this case? No. Have we been contacting his office about this case? Most assuredly. Have they done anything about it? No. So as it stands now, you have an innocent young man. Their star witness, who was supposed to be an eyewitness, has indicated that the young man is not responsible for it. And the victim has already indicated that the young man is not responsible for it. He's still in jail. Whip, they can get an update. Welcome to Baltimore. Thank you. Jay Wendell Gordon, the warrior lawyer. Thank you. Keep watching BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth.